Well, infrastructure done right can be win-win. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower was the person who brought us the interstate highway system. Uh, but frankly, when, when I was Labor Secretary and we were working on this issue, uh, it, consensus was elusive because the Republican plans uh, you know, simply didn't meet the test that we, we felt was necessary. Infrastructure needs to create good middle-class jobs. Infrastructure bills that are, frankly, a tax break, that fund projects that are already going to take place, that's not infrastructure. Infrastructure bills that contain policy riders that are going to uh, gut prevailing wage and other protections for workers, those are not valid infrastructure bills. Infrastructure that doesn't account for the need in Flint to uh, address the water crisis and the need in rural America to build a broadband infrastructure. Uh, those are the infrastructure projects that we need to move forward on. So I, we'd love to have infrastructure done right, but as you, you, look at the pre, you look at the president's budget that was submitted, it's hard for me to be optimistic about coming to consensus on infrastructure when you see such a dramatic cut in funding for, for basic infrastructure maintenance. We, we spoke with Secretary, uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross this morning. He said he sees things in three buckets, things that are uh, projects that bring a lot of revenue to the table. He doesn't think we need public-private partnerships there. Uh, things where there is no revenue, and that's basically got to be government stepping in to do it. But then he says you have areas that have some potential revenue but are also fairly high risk, and that's where he sees public-private partnerships potentially working the best. Would you agree with that assessment? Well, the, the, the challenge that I see with that is that when I look at what is being proposed, it's all about tax breaks for, uh, it, it's not an infrastructure bill, it's a tax break bill, it's a tax credit bill. And, and what that results in is you're, you're taking projects that you would otherwise all already do but I think that's and the you're question. moving forward. Are these projects that we would already do or are they projects that bring so much risk to them that you would not necessarily see the private sector? Well, I mean, we, we have to invest, we have to ask the question in any infrastructure bill, what does this do for Flint and other communities like Flint? What does this do for rural America, areas that need to have a broadband infrastructure so that they can uh, transform their economies for the jobs of the 21st century? And, and those will involve public investment. Those will involve you know, making sure that we are you know, putting workers first. And, and I, I support those efforts. But again, when I look at the, the president's proposals today... I, I, I think you are uh, you're putting things in, in, in terms where there, there could be a little more gray, a, a little more compromise in some of these areas than maybe you're laying it out. I, well, I understand that that's been the pushback, that these are all uh, projects that are, are, are simply tax cuts, but there is a little more nuance in it than that. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't call building a border wall an infrastructure project. Uh, granted, and, let's and take that off the table. Let's take that off the table, but when you look at bridges and tunnels and some of the other things that could be fixed along the way, uh, it's not necessarily areas, I mean, those those seem like areas where you should be able to get a lot of support. From well, I mean, you, you look in the aftermath uh, years ago when you had the uh, bridge collapse uh, in Minneapolis-St. Right. Paul, and then you see what happened yesterday uh, in Atlanta on I-85. I mean, th this is a quintessential illustration of what happens when you don't take care of things. We've got bridges and roads and across this country uh, that are so old, if they were people, they'd be on Medicare. But, but and, uh, uh, Secretary, maybe, yeah, we, it shouldn't, we, maybe it shouldn't get bogged down in, in saying, are these, you know, or is it going to create the right kind of jobs? Are we going to make sure the unions are taken care of and that we don't have any negotiations for, you know, for, for contracting it out? Who does it? Isn't the, the, the priority is getting the bridges fixed and the, and the roads built? I mean, it's nice to get... It's nice to get jobs as part of it, and that's part of that's always been the democratic mantra that it's a job creator. Private sector is probably a better place to create jobs, but uh, but it, I mean we do want the infrastructure fixed too, right? I mean, and we get bogged down in all this the arguing about you know whether it's a tax cut or whether it's not, and it just seems like it's self-defeating, well, and we're going to end up with nothing built. Maybe that's why nothing got built for the last eight I years. I mean, you know, historically we've been able to build roads and bridges, do so in a bipartisan fashion, create good middle-class jobs. I was out at a military base in the Pacific Northwest recently when I was labor secretary. It was a, it was a project labor agreement. The project was building a very sensitive uh, infrastructure item on that base. It was coming in under budget and on schedule in partnership with the Defense Department, with the labor, uh, with, with labor uh, support, and it was creating jobs. It was doing everything you want to see done. Infrastructure done right can be win-win. Right. And unfortunately, we have there, there's some folks that are, frankly, on an ideological mission. I do not want to have any ability for someone to get a prevailing wage and a job. The vice president led the effort when he was the governor of uh, Indiana 
to repeal prevailing wage. I think that's bad public policy. We don't want to create uh, minimum wage construction jobs. And so, and we don't need to. That's, that's the bottom Can line. I ask you Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.